The GPA case got even better. It got a Pi 3A Plus inside, a 3.5 inch IPS QVGA screen, modified buttons and D-pad, and also the shoulder buttons. Hey, how is going Adam here? Today we're gonna continue modding the GPA case. We will add a Pi 3A Plus, a big screen, and better buttons. Before we even start, let me say that you do this at your own risk. Doing this will risk your case and the PCB. Also, this is not the perfect way of doing it, so if you want to follow along, take it at your own risk. Without out of the way, let's get into it. I already added a 4000 mAh battery and a Qi charger to mine. If you want to check it out, have a look at my GPI battery mod video. First things first, we will use a slim down Pi 3A Plus, on which I removed pretty much all the connectors and cut the GPIO pin. Second, we're gonna use Tinkerboy's DPI adapter in order to drive the screen. Speaking about it, we will use a 3.5 inch IPS display with a resolution of 600 by 400 and a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. I still have to find a reliable source for these screens as I don't really want to sell them per piece. These go really well into GMB0 builds along with Tinker's DPI adapter. The first thing that we will need to do is to take the case apart. Just unscrew the 6 screws that keep it in place and with a plastic card just ply it around it and it should just pop out very easily. Careful though, the ribbon cable that connects both sides of the case needs to be removed as well. With the both sides apart, I will have to remove the booster and the Qi charging in order for me to go forward with the mod. You will not gonna have to do this if you don't have this mod done. So let's start with the back part. The first thing that needs to be removed is the cartridge connector PCB. We will need to modify this one, so unscrew all 6 so we can just pop it out. Letting us with an empty back shell. The cartridge PCB needs to be modified. This is pretty much straightforward. With a clamp, just remove the plastic part of the cartridge connector and clean the pads with a hot soldering iron. This will reveal the connector that comes from our Pi to the GPI case. We will need the side pins for our power to the Pi. And also, these two for the USB, which will go to the GPI PCB. This will give us the controls. On this PCB, I also added a splitter. As we will need power to both our Pi and DPI adapter. So all that needs done is to solder two wires for the power and two wires that goes onto our Pi USB. The power cables will go onto our splitter board and now we got the power for both our Pi and DPI adapter slash display combo. You can find the gerber files in the description and get it made, it's around $5 for 10 pieces. So let's get to the case modification first. I already modified the screen cutout. I recommend you to get a Dremel with a flexible head, so you get full control while you do that. Jewelry files and saws are a really good addition to your tools. The screen will fit perfectly once you filed all the sides. Make sure that it's close to the lip of the case, as you don't want to have a gap through dust can pass or any other debris. Once it fits, let's get to our buttons. For my D-pad, I will use an NES one as it's tall enough, and to be honest, this is my favorite D-pad. This is very easy, and it takes you just 5 minutes. With the file, just pass over all sides 3 or 4 times, so you take just a small amount of material each time. On the inside, you will see that the circle that is around the D-pad is a bit bigger on the NES one. So with a clamp, just cut around it, and it just pops in place. Let's get to our SNES buttons. This will not be fitting also, so with a step drill bit, enlarge the holes so we can fit the SNES buttons. After that, we will need to cut the place where the pegs from the buttons will be. The GPI ones are too small for our replacement buttons. And that was it with the front face of the case. We modified the screen opening and the buttons. Now let's get to the back part of the case. In here, we will house our Pi 3A Plus and DPI combo. So in order to make that possible, we will need to remove some of the extra material that stays in our way. 
Do this carefully, as even the smallest mistake will leave permanent damage to the case. With the cartridge space empty, we can make a test fit to see if it all fits well. And it does. Now that we know that all fits well, we can start closing it down. On the front part of the case, let's bring our buttons and silicone pads. Now the screen, add it with the ribbon cable facing up. We will not fix it down as yet, as I wanted to be able to move it a bit freely, so I just added a foam razor that will press the screen down once we mounted the PCB in place. Speaking of which, add that on top of our screen and buttons and make sure you slide the screen ribbon cable through the top of the case. Screw it down and that is it. We can now focus on the back side. This will be a tricky mount as the ribbon cable is not very long and we don't have enough space. So bring the top part of the case near the bottom as such. Now is the time to connect the display ribbon cable with the DPI adapter. With it connected, we can bring the cartridge PCB on top of the Pi. Make sure that you slid through the Pi power cables and just screw the PCB down. Make sure you got your L and R silicone pad in place, as it's a pain to open it and mount them after you close the case. Make sure that the screws are tightly screwed and let's start soldering our cables. First, let's pre-thin the cable ends. And let's solder first the cables that come from our DPI adapter. Red on plus and black on minus. For the Pi cables, just repeat. If you got the battery mod, you can reattach the micro USB charging connector now with some glue. Now we are remaining with just two cables for power. Solder these on plus and minus on the PCB. Here, you will need longer cables than usual, which will need to be tucked in on the right side of the case. With that done, we can now start closing the case. Make sure you got all the wires tucked in and let's give it a first test. And it works. Kind of. We got the screen rotated 180 degrees. That's super simple to turn. Just add display under bar rotate equals 2 in the config file and that is it. Now we can solder the USB wires to the USB pins on the back of the Pi. Green is D plus and white is D minus. Give it a try to see if all is fine. If your buttons don't work, just press up and select for 5 seconds and the buttons will start working. And now, I think it's the time to close it all down. Press the case all together and bring your screws in place. The cartridge cover can be just slit in place, but I might add a magnet so it stays there. Now, next to be modded are the L and R buttons. To remove the initial buttons, insert the thin edge in and just push forward. They will just pop out, the case doesn't need to be opened. Links with the files will be in the video description. I printed mine in PLA, then sanded, filed and painted all the sides. These come in two parts, so we'll need to give them a light sanding, as my 3D printer is not that great, and glue down the peg to the button. They fit very well. All they need is to be popped in place. Do that a bit carefully, if your pain wasn't cured fully, place a piece of foam over them and just press it until you hear a pop. And that is it. We got them in place nicely. And they feel amazing. For the last touch, I bought these custom stickers made by John Dynia. John, if I messed up your name here, sorry. These are pretty straightforward to mount. Just peel off your sticker carefully and just place the new one. Links to his Etsy store in the description. Well now is just one last thing that bothers me. The SD card slot that the cartridge had. So just glue the rubber cover in place and just sand it down so we can fit our build like so. Now this just snaps in place. We are done. Let's give it a power on for a last test and that was it. We are finally done. We changed the screen from buttons L and R ones, added a battery, a Qi charger, and a Pi 3A+. All that made it my favorite handheld until now. The screen to body ratio is just perfect, 
And if you take in consideration all the features that they are packed in such a small footprint, the time and money spent on it is all worth it. Now, how I said in the beginning, this is not a perfect build, nor the perfect way of doing it. For example, the audio is not even connected, but it just serves as a proof of concept. If you are here by now, please consider subscribing and sharing this video. My name is Adam and I will see you in the next one.